Hi, this is Teresa Bennett, the Analyst Coach, and our webinar today is on how to kickstart your BA career. I'm going to give you a little bit of background information right now about me in case you're not familiar with me. I have been working in IT for the last 20 years, uh, starting out as a software tester and then moving into business analysis. And quite frankly, even as a software tester, I uh, was doing business analysis because at that time there uh, really wasn't a defined role for business analysis. There wasn't that title. There wasn't that that job role in and of itself. So. As the um, software tester on the projects I was assigned to, I was actually also filling the role of business analyst. I just did not know it at the time. So that's a little bit of uh, background information on me. And uh, later, after we go through some slides and things, I am going to um, tell you a little bit more uh, about my background, a little, uh, a little story about myself. So we'll get into that after we look at some other information. So our agenda for uh, this call is how to be seen as a serious BA, how to show your value in meetings with stakeholders, and how to get project managers to be excited that you're the business analyst assigned to their project. Poor communication. Communication, communication, communication. The biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it actually took place. We're all talking, but we're not necessarily always communicating. Poor communication is the reason most IT projects fail. According to a web poll released by the Computing Technology Industry Association, nearly 28% of the more than 1,000 respondents to the survey said poor communication is the number one cause of project failure. PMI's 2013 Pulse of the Profession report revealed that $135 million is at risk for every $1 billion spent on a project. Further research on the importance of effective communication uncovers that a startling 56%, that's 75 million of that 135 million, is at risk due to ineffective communication. $75 million at risk because of poor communication. The Forbes Insights 2010 Strategic Initiative Study called Adapting Corporate Strategy to the Changing Economy, found that nine out of 10 CEOs believe that communication is critical to the success of their strategic initiatives, and nearly half of the respondents cite communications as an integral and active component of their strategic planning and execution process. So even at the level, the executive level, all the way up to the CEOs, they place a huge amount of importance on communication. And project managers see it similarly from their side. In that same study, 55% of project managers agree that effective communication to all stakeholders is the most critical success factor in project management. We know how important communication is. Everybody agrees it's important. So why does it seem to be the one thing that we struggle with the most? The number one reason we struggle with communication is fear. We're afraid of looking stupid, afraid of asking wrong questions, afraid we'll say the wrong thing, afraid the stakeholder will think we don't know the process as well as we should, afraid the developers will think we don't know the technology as well as we should, afraid, afraid, afraid. The number two reason is lack of understanding that communication is a skill and needs to be learned and practiced. If you're going to be successful, really successful as a BA, you have got to release your fears around communication. It's okay to ask what's considered dumb questions. It's okay if the stakeholder thinks you should already know the answer to a question you asked. You have to develop excellent communication skills and then actually use them. Position yourself as the expert. This is how you're going to be seen as a serious BA. You have to be confident. You have to take control. You should be the leader in your requirement sessions. Nobody else should be leading those sessions. Nobody else should take control of the conversation. You should at all times maintain control and be the leader. That does not mean that you are at all times talking. You want to do a minimum amount of talking. You want your stakeholders, your SMEs, everybody else in the room to, uh, to do the communicating, but you should be leading that conversation down the path that it should be going in. Communication is key. You have to be professional 
And you have to remember not to take things personally. If somebody doesn't agree with something that you've said, if they don't like an idea that you've thrown out, don't take it personally. It's not something uh, against you or about you. It's the idea that they may be disagreeing with. So don't take things personally. How to show your value in meetings with stakeholders. One, you have to know your audience. There's different methods and different levels of communicating depending on the audience. So, for example, executives need a high level of information to help them make decisions. They do not want you to get into the weeds with them. Product owners are going to need more details, and subject matter experts will need even more detail. But, again, you have to remember they only want the detail around the areas that affect them. If you have, say, five different areas affected by your project, the SMEs for Area 1, quite frankly, don't care about what's being changed or what affects Area Number 5, right? They care about their world and what the changes are going to do uh, for them, their day-to-day -day operations, their activities, the tasks that they do. That's what they care about. So you have to remember to focus in on your audience, know your audience, and know what their needs are. And that's how you're really going to show your value. Be prepared. Do your research before your meetings. Understand the product. Understand how the current application and or the business processes work today. Ask meaningful questions. Don't ask questions because you're trying to show your value and you just want to ask questions, right? So don't go into a meeting tomorrow and say, well, Teresa said that I should ask more questions, so I'm just going to think up questions to ask, right? They have to be meaningful and thoughtful. Ask thoughtful questions that are going to add value to the discussion. And don't offer solutions in requirement meetings. This is probably one of the hardest things for BAs to do, is to not get caught up in a solution conversation. Sometimes we're guilty of starting the conversations ourselves, and other times there are other people in the room that start offering solutions, and we start running with it, and before you know, you're in a full-blown conversation about a solution. We're going back to you keeping control of the conversation. That also means that you make sure that you don't start down a path of a solution or somebody else doesn't head down a solution path during a requirements meeting. Now, let's look at how to get project managers to be excited that you're the business analyst assigned to their project. PMs gossip, so it's true. Project managers gossip with each other. They talk to each other. So if a PM named John tells PM Sarah that Bill is the BA assigned to his project and Sarah makes a face showing concern, John is going to believe right from the beginning that Bill is not a good BA. Is it fair? It may not be, but it's true. You want Sarah to say, oh, I had Bill on a project a few months ago. He was awesome, right? You want other PMs within the organization to give you a stamp of approval to the other PMs in the organization. And to do that, you've got to make sure that you're adding value to every PM's project that you're assigned to because you have to remember that they're all going to talk to each other and your reputation is going to be based on what they think about you. And whether you think that's fair or not doesn't really play into it. It is what it is and you have to make sure that you're aware of that and that you are doing what you need to do to ensure that your, relation, that your, um, your relationship with them, with the PMs, is as good as it possibly can be and that your reputation is as good as it possibly can be. Make sure you have a reputation for doing what's right, doing what's needed, and doing your absolute best. Doing what's right isn't always what's popular. Doing what's needed isn't always in the job description. Jump in and help wherever you can add value. Don't say, that's not my task, that's not my job. If it needs to be done and you can do it, then step up and do it. And make sure that you're always giving 100% to each task that you are doing. Get a successful project under your belt and you'll start seeing a difference at work. A successful project is one that comes in on time, on budget, and meets the customer's needs. 80% of failed projects fail due to poor requirements. So don't let your projects fall into that 
If a project fails that you're on, you do not want it to fail because of poor requirements. If it fails for other reasons, other things that are out of your control, then that's not something you need to be concerned with. But if a project is failing because of poor requirements, that is your problem because that is your job on the project is to make sure that the requirements or are as clear, concise, and complete as they possibly can be. So you want to make sure that your project does not fail due to poor requirements. I would like to invite you to join the BA Success Club. This is a membership-only group for serious business analysts that want to take their careers to the next level. In the club, you will learn the techniques that I've used to be seen as a senior BA, how to be more confident leading requirement sessions, how to ask the right questions, how to ensure you have complete requirements, how to improve those communication skills, specific documentation techniques, and so much more. Things around validating requirements, um, things related to specific tasks that you'll be doing every day as a BA. We will have uh, monthly group meetings. You'll have individual coaching sessions with me. There are so many benefits to uh, this membership that I can't really list them all right here and right now. I want you to use the link that you see here in, um, in the slides to join this club and start driving your own career bus. Anytime someone else is in the driver's seat, then they're making decisions for you. You should be making your decisions for yourself and taking your career on the path that you want it to go on. So write down this link and go, the link and go there now. Membership is limited, so you want to make sure that you go ahead and look at the club and see what the benefits are and sign up now and get yourself in the driver's seat for your career. I think that it's so important that we all understand what it takes from us to make our careers successful. We do not have the option. We don't have the option of letting somebody else determine our career path. If we do that, then it is what their vision for us is. So think of yourself right now in this moment and where you are at in your career and think about what could be changed in that if you took action and created your own goals, your own career path, your own salary. Everything about your career became your decision. It's in your hands. Don't leave it up to your manager, your company, your HR department. I think that as employees, we all have a tendency to feel like we don't have choices. But we do have choices. Every single day, we have choices to make that are either going to advance our careers, move our careers backwards, or keep them at exactly the same place they're at. So it's up to you to make the choices that you need to make in order to move your career in the direction that you want to go. If you are not happy, if you find yourself complaining about the situation at work, about the projects that you're assigned to, maybe about your manager or how you feel the company is treating you, none of that is the company's fault, your manager's fault, the projects that you're on, it's not their fault. It's quite honestly your fault, right? Because you're allowing yourself to be in that situation. And I can say that because I was there and I was in that situation. So I know exactly what that feels like and I can say that with authority because I was there. I'm not somebody telling you, hey, go out and make a change and do something different when I didn't do something different because I absolutely did. And, um, you know, it's sometimes scary to, to make changes and think I need to do this something different. But, um, you know, I've heard people say, well, why take the, um, 
why take the chance to fail? And my response to that is, why not take the chance to succeed? If you don't take chances, you're not going to either fail or succeed. You're going to stay the same, which is failure in and of itself. So you, you have to do the things that are going to help move yourself forward. And if you don't know how to do those things on your own, then you need to get help from people, mentorship from people that can help lead you in the right direction to do that. And that's really what the VA Success Club is really all about. So I hope that you'll look, take a look at that link that I gave you that's on the screen there and that you will take the opportunity to invest in yourself and your future.